What is up guys, Ben Allen back again with another video and today we're bringing another skills validation. We're gonna be doing initiating a direct line IV. And this is probably one that you guys are freaking out about whether you don't like needles, you're afraid of sticking, you don't know how to do it, you feel like not confident. Well, we're gonna go through it. We have a dummy arm right here. You'll see it in a bit. And uh, Sergeant Zuniga is gonna show you how to properly you know, stick, find the site, clean it, initiate that line and everything like that. And we'll also be putting out a video on how to do a saline lock as well, so stay on the lookout for that. But uh, again, we got our instruct our demonstrator here. We got our beautiful cameraman back there, and uh, we got me just reading off line by line exactly what needs to happen, and that's what he's gonna do. But before we get into it, guys, I need you all to like this video, subscribe if you aren't already. Even if you're not signed into your YouTube account, just take the two seconds it uh, takes to sign in. And also comment down below what you're most nervous about for AIT or what you're most excited about for AIT. But without further ado, let's get to it. All right guys, so we got our dummy arm right here. Again, I'm gonna be reading uh, line by line and as I do that, he's gonna be going through the steps, right? So step one is take BSI, which is body substance isolation, especially uh, when you're gonna be you know, using needles or penetrating skin and things like that. You don't wanna risk uh, getting the site dirty or anything like that. So he's gonna go ahead and start doing that. Gloves are always tricky, guys, especially when you're working with tape because everything sticks together and uh, you, it's not a good time, all right? So I would uh, try and have those gloves already ready because it does take away from time and things like that, right? So step two is gather, inspect, and prepare your equipment. So this step is very important because you definitely want to make sure everything's opened, everything's prepped, everything's you know ready to go, ease of access, because once you stick, you're only going to be working with pretty much one hand, depending on how you occlude that actual uh, catheter when you're attaching the saline lock or attaching the direct line. So right now you see him opening up everything, getting it set, and uh, that's good, exactly what he's doing right now, guys. So he's got his line prepped, he's opening his needles, he's opening a syringe, things like that. There we go, there we go. For, for demonstration purposes, we're not going to actually puncture the bag, but when you would do it, you're gonna pull this little, this little blue tab right here, okay? And you're also going to grab uh, the uh, cap here, right? Puncture the exposed site once you pull the, the blue tube. You're also going to uh, to occlude the line as well. So, and grab the wheel and you're just gonna scroll it down. There we right? go. And it's gonna lock the line. From there, you're going to grab the uh, the drip chamber, squeeze it twice, and it's gonna fill up about halfway. And that's where you want to leave it at, right? No more, no less. Yep. And that goes into your whole inspect, gather, and prepare your equipment, guys. That'll save you a lot of time. All right. And uh, again, we're not going to be poking the actual bag just because uh, we don't have like enough fluids here. These are just for training purposes. So uh, they just allowed us to use that to give you guys a visual. All right. So now that he's done that, he's going to spike the bag and properly prepare IV tubing like he said he was. You guys just saw that. All right, guys. So the next step, he's going to apply a constricting band and he's going to go over exactly how to place it, you know, how to set it up. So when you do release it, it's super easy and you don't get caught up with it. So go ahead. So with the constricting band, what you want to do is you want to find the uh, the upper arm. Okay, you're going to go underneath. Okay. Don't go too low. Right next to, right next to the puncture site, you want to kind of like go about halfway through the, through the upper arm. From there, okay, you're going, to, you're going to tie a knot. Now, this is going to be a slip knot because you want to be able to get this off as soon as possible. Now, the trick is, is that you want to get this lower part right here, right? tight as possible, you're gonna go over, you're gonna come underneath, and just gonna be a little bit of a lip, right? So you wanna do this whenever you, so once you get done sticking, there you go. pretty much all you have to do is pull this, right? That's it. Yeah. Now if you do it the other way, right? If you do it the other way where the top goes down, okay, and this can get away, so this can get in the way of your sticking site. You wanna make sure that uh, the slip portion is going to be on the the bottom of the arm. So bam, he's going to set it up the proper way, and then we're going to move on to the next step. 
Okay. Bam. So there we go. Right there. Constricting ban has been applied, right? That's step four. <clears throat> step five, you're going to cleanse the site with an alcohol wipe and then uncap the needle. So he's going to locate his site, guys, right? And there's a, there's a good number of veins you can go for. Usually you want to go for the one that you can see the most. And it's always better to start lower than higher because if you miss on the lower section, you can always go up higher on that vein and stick, right? Again, this is a mannequin, guys. So when he does penetrate the skin, you may not see a flash uh, just because, you know, uh, the blood that circulates through this is like dried up and things like that. But you will know you get a good stick once you see that red flash of blood go through the, the needle chamber, all right? So now he's uncapped his needle, right? You want to do the rainbow method, things like that. Um, and now you're going to hold the skin taut, distal to the site of the venipuncture with non-dominant hand, right? Taut. So he's right. pulling it taut, right? It makes the vein pop out a little more. And now he's going to hold the needle at a 20 to 30 degree angle, bevel up over top of the venipuncture site. And then he's going to pierce the skin and advance the needle and catheter until blood is visualized in the flash chamber, right? Okay, there's blood in the chamber. So we'll say there is blood in the chamber, right? And now that he's done that, he's going to drop the needle 10 to 15 degrees and advance 1 eighth of an inch. And the reason you do this, guys, is because if you don't advance, you can try and put the catheter in and it'll jam up and it'll kink. And then that's like a not, it, it's a no-go. It's like a, it's a bad stick pretty much, right? So now that he's done that, he's going to advance the catheter until the hub touches the skin or until significant resistance is felt. So as you can see, he's advanced the hub and he does have a flash, right? So now he's going to release the constricting band with the non-dominant hand. So this is where... It comes in, right? So my personal trick to it is you're gonna grab these three fingers from your non-dominant hand. You're going to occlude, right? You wanna make sure you stop all this bleeding that's happening right now, right? Mm -hmm. Then from here, you're gonna grab onto the the hub of the catheter, pop your constricting band, right? Bam, there Done. you go. And then once you do that, he's going to occlude the vein with the non-dominant hand like he just did. He took it a little step further to prevent bleeding, which is good. And now he's going to remove the needle and place it in a sharps container. So sharps okay, goes sharps, in our container. Goes in the container. Sweet. And now that he's done that, he's going to connect the IV tubing that he prepared earlier and then place a strip of one inch tape over the hub and initiate the flow of fluids. Connect. So bam, he's connected right. his IV tubing, right? And now he's going to secure it with a one inch tape over the hub and then he's going to initiate that flow of fluids. And honestly, guys, I'm surprised this, this thing actually bled because I didn't expect it to. I thought it was just a shitty dummy arm, but, you know, hey, it works. Fast. Look at that. That's where our blood's coming from right there, guys. And uh, while he's getting the tape ready, comment down below uh, what are the skills you want to see in the future, what other 68 whiskey content you wish to see. So now that he's got that covered, right, he would pick up his bag and his needle. So you can hold the bag on top of it as well. Yeah. So now that he's got his uh, needle in, he would go up here, right, and he would initiate the flow of fluids. Again, we okay, didn't so actually stick the here. bag, but so you come over here, and then you're going to release that, right, you pull it up, there we go. This little roll there wheel. we go. And so now flow of fluids would begin to go in, 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 right? And now he would uh, verbalize and assess IV site for any signs of symptoms of infiltration. So go ahead. I would uh, go ahead and assess the the IV sites for any uh, signs of, of infiltration. All right, so I go ahead and assess. You see no signs of infiltration. And then uh, he would cover with the transparent dressing and secure IV tubing to the casualty. But uh, guys, just a quick tip, right? And a good way to check that you're in there is you can drop the bag lower than the arm and you'll see a return of blood going through the tubing. And that means you're good. It's pretty much like your, fl uh, your, uh, your flush. Pretty much, like if you're doing a saline lock, you'll, you'll see about that in another video. But that's a good way to tell, and then you just raise the bag higher, and then fluids will continue to flow. So now that he's done that, he's going to place his transparent dressing over the actual arm, or the site, guys, where he's stuck. And that just prevents, like, you know, it, like, from coming undone or loose or getting dirty, things like that. And it's just a good way to protect the overall site. All right, bam, so that's done. And now he will secure the tubing to the casualty. And a good way to do that, you can do one inch tape and some people even wrap around the, the wrist and the thumb as well, just so if they do get snagged on something, it won't go flying out of their arm, you know? And uh, yo, if any of your instructors like take your bags and toss them to see if it's good, yo, they're the real ones, bro. Our instructors used to do that to us. They would literally grab people's bags, throw them across the room to see if we like had secured our IV tubing correctly. 
And I, I thought it was funny and I thought it was a good way to learn. And bam, there you go guys. He secured the IV tubing to the casualty. And that's pretty much step by step this entire direct line skill. So if you come over here, um, I, we really hope you guys appreciate it. That concludes the direct line IV skills validation, right? We really hope you enjoyed it. Comment down below what you thought, what other videos you want to see in the future, and like this video if you got any information whatsoever from it, and subscribe to this channel if you aren't already. It would really mean a lot to us, and uh, there's just more informative 68 whiskey and just military content in general coming your way. But we'll see you on the next one. Later.